Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is another episode of my series called Make It a Chord Melody, where we are working on the art and craft of chord melody on the guitar in jazz and non-jazz musical styles. In this video, we are doing Stella by Starlight, which is a beautiful ballad jazz standard. I've actually done an arrangement on this tune on the channel before. You can get that arrangement for free with my solo guitar arrangement pack. There's a link in the description to download that. And what I recommend for this lesson is that you download that because this Stella by Starlight arrangement is right there for you with tabs and notation. And in a previous video, I talked about just the execution of playing this arrangement. The link to that video is in the description as well. In this video, I wanna talk about breaking down the decision-making process for what chord shapes I used to harmonize each note of the melody, which is what we've been talking about in this whole series, the chord melody series. If you wanna check out the other videos of this series, there's also a link to that in the description. So download that and get that PDF handy and follow along as we talk about arranging Stella by Starlight as a chord melody. Let's do it. So we're just gonna do the first portion of this and talk through it. This first note, B flat of the melody. Here's the melody. That's about the portion that we're gonna do. Just playing it for getting it in our ears for a second. This first note is a pickup note and it would actually be the, the last chord of the tune. It's gonna be B flat major seven. So I'm just taking that note and then playing an inversion of B flat major seven that I make sure includes the guide tones, the seven and the three, and then it happens to have five in it and the root on top. So that's that first chord. In this series, if you've watched any of the other videos or if you do later, you'll hear me say that we don't ever want to replace the three or the seven or the, or the three or the six, the guide tones, but we can replace the root and we can re replace the five to make room for melody movements. The reason I bring all that up is that this is the one exception where if it's a half diminished chord, we can replace the three, this flat three in this case, with the four. So the four is the melody, and that is the shape, half to E half diminished with four as the melody. Okay, I've said before also that the hardest part about this type of arranging is when the melody sustains and the chord changes um, underneath the melody sustaining. So this is one of those cases. Right, so it's all about just physically figuring out how in the world can we possibly get um, the melody to stay on top just with our limited fingers and limited strings and have the movement um, happen while that melody keeps ringing to make the chord complete. So it's sometimes not possible, but when it's possible, we wanna solve that puzzle and figure it out. So here's the next part of the melody. Okay, now these chord shapes are so fun and so tasty to use. All of that is on an A7 flat nine chord. When we have a dominant seven flat nine chord, we get to use um, liberally the diminished seven chord shape, which is this shape here. And when you're playing this chord shape, it inverts to itself, which means that every three frets, you can play the same physical shape and you're playing an inversion of that chord. So if we looked at the actual chord tones, this is the five of A, this is the flat nine of A, this is the third of A, and this is the flat seven of A. And then if we move up here, same shape, three frets up, this is the flat seven of A, this is the third of A, this is the five of A, this is the flat nine of A. If you move up again, you're still playing A7 flat nine every time, but these are flipping around what they are. Now this is flat nine, and this is five, and this is flat seven, and this is three. You don't need to have all that <clears throat> memorized from hearing it once. Do not let yourself be overwhelmed by that. I just wanna you know, share this information as it's coming up and how it's relevant to the arranging here. So this is how anytime ever there's a flat seven on the top string that I need to use as the melody. The melody note is the flat seven of a dominant seventh chord, specifically a dominant seventh chord with a flat nine. That's always going to be the shape that I use in this chord melody kind of formula approach. And I wanna have as many of those go-to, you know, don't have to reinvent the wheel and think about it options to speed up this process and get to the artistic kind of expressive, 
expressive part as soon as possible. So flat seven. Okay, now the root of A, it's still A dominant seven flat nine, uh, and also has a flat 13. So now this is flat seven, three, flat 13, root on top. And then it goes to the flat nine is the melody. So if you don't get anything else out of this, just know if you wanna go towards this, you need to know every melody note what it is on the chord. This is flat seven of A7 flat nine. This is the root of A7 flat nine. This is the flat nine of A7 flat nine. And we need to know that so then we can make the chord shape around it that includes the guide tones and whatever else um, is needed to fill it out. Let's move on to the next chord. Here's the melody note and the chord is C minor seven. Okay, here's one of those plug and play formula moments. If the note is harmonized by a minor chord, if the melody is on a minor chord and the melody note happens to be the four of that chord, and if you can do it on the top string, it's always gonna be this shape. Okay, so that's just how I do that. And if you watch the video in this series about improvising, you'll see that we've mapped out the scale around each chord type and how we use the four as the melody note with this shape. Okay, so that is such a lovely sound. This is a minor 11 chord for a moment because the four and the 11 are the same thing. And this is so nice. All we need to do is move this one note down a half step to get a F dominant seven. This is just the top four notes of this big F dominant seven. Okay, so we went. That's where the melody note is ringing and the chords move underneath. Now, the chord is gonna move, change to F minor seven and the melody is gonna go up to the two of that chord. Notice my language, how I'm thinking of it as the melody is the two of the chord. I'm not saying it's G. I'm not saying it's third fret. Okay, so let's actually hear it from the beginning to that. That harmonic change is so lovely. Now, we have to do a lot of the ringing melody with chords changing underneath. This voicing is one of my favorites. In the last video I talked about it, in many of these videos I talked about it, it's a little hard to see because of the open string, but it's this dominant 713 shape that it feels like a lot to take in, but if you get used to the idea that if you're gonna harmonize the six of a dominant seventh chord on the top string, you can always use this shape. Okay, moving on. Easy enough, this is the um, B flat dominant seven, where just those two notes move on top. This is the five on top, this is the six on top. We can replace the five anytime, we, we can replace the root anytime. Okay, so how do we make sense of this note? The third string harmonizing gets a little trickier than the top string or the second string. So we need to harmonize an E flat major seven chord with this note right here. We actually did this um, in the Misty arrangement, the standard jazz tune Misty I arranged in the last video of this series. So check that out, the same exact note on the same chord on E flat major seven. So here's the voicing I used before where I'm thinking of this bottom note, even though this is a minor seven sounding chord shape, this is the third of E flat, this is the seven of E flat, this is the two or nine of E flat, and this is the five of E flat. And actually in this arrangement, I like to do it like this, where it's just those four notes. And this is the third of E flat, this is the six of E flat, this is the two or nine of E flat, this is the five of E flat. Ah, lovely. Now the chord changes to A flat dominant seven. So this is physically really hard. I'm holding this down. I'm trying to keep this melody ringing here and then putting these two fingers down to make this shape, which is like a shell voicing shape of A flat dominant seven. Check out my video on shell voicings if you don't know what I mean by that. Link in the description. So a feature of this arrangement is how much the melody is ringing and the harmony is moving around it. And a feature of this song, this jazz tune, is the melody being simple and diatonic, meaning it's staying mostly in one scale, and the harmony being chromatic, 
in that it's changing keys all over the place like crazy. Moving on, in the arrangement, I play a couple notes without chords, and I've talked about this throughout the series. So in this case, I ended up going, uh, playing two notes without chords, and then landing on this, which is the root and the third of B flat. Okay, and then this goes over B flat major seven, and this is cool. We're coming back to this kind of bar shape over here that we were thinking of as E flat before. Well now, this G minor seven shape is B flat. That's the six of B flat. That's the third of B flat. That's the five of B flat. And this is the root of B flat. Or, you know, in the melody, it's going two, one of B flat. So, okay, so all of these shapes, we want to be able to interpret them off of the root of the actual chord. If this is B flat, one, seven, six, oh, that's six, one, two, three, that's three of the chord, one, two, three, four, five, that's five of the chord, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, that's one of the chord, that's two of the chord. That's the stuff I talk about in my chord theory series, like from the ground up. So check that out. There's a link in the description if you want to work out that stuff uh, video by video, one step at a time. So from here, I like to play that note first and then get to the chord shape. So this is just a straight up an inversion of E half diminished. And then I move to make it the A root because that's where the chords go. Then this melody note goes up here and it's A7 flat nine. So I'm using that diminished shape on A7 flat nine, just like we talked about earlier but it's a different physical shape, but the same concept. We did this before. Over A7 flat nine, well right here, also diminished shape over A7 flat nine. That's the fifth of the chord. After this, the next melody goes da, 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 on D minor seven. Okay, I wanna point this out. These are the moments that, I, that I'm trying to get to to point out that this right here, That note is the four of D minor seven. So we're using that chord shape again. Over here, it was this note is the four of C minor seven. The melody was the four of C minor seven. Four of D minor seven. Ah, same thing, right? I'm not saying it's easy, but you see how those little, the little shortcuts of um, being familiar with exactly what it should be when we, when we see this chord tone. Is this on this chord, therefore I play this shape. So I wanna skip ahead a little bit, skip this stuff because that's a little confusing but let's go to the f major seven the melody on an f major seven chord goes da, 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 da. and again think what is this on the chord four three two one on f major seven well on four of a major seven chord i play diminished or nothing at all i think in the actual arrangement there's nothing there but it could be diminished and then here's our normal f major seven shape with third on top and then this is still f major seven that's the six though, F major six. Six, three, five, two. Six, three, five, one. Okay, so if I need to go one, two, three, two, one, two, three, that's the language that I'm using every time, or if I'm improvising with it too. That little line there that I just played would work over just someone playing F major seven or F major six as the accompaniment. So those are the kind of points that I'm trying to get across and hopefully um, inspire you with just as a concept that that is possible to get to that level of starting to see a few of these things as parts of a language instead of just haphazard figuring it out from scratch every time. We had that F major seven. It goes to E half diminished with normal shape because the third happens to be the melody. Now we have this. This is A dominant seven flat nine. And the reason I wanna point this out is we're doing the same thing we did earlier. Why are we doing that? Because if we're on A dominant seven flat nine and the melody is the root and then the melody is the flat nine, every time I'm gonna play this shape to this shape. And that's what happens here. It's A dominant seven flat nine. Melody does that, chord shapes are that. Okay, next spot. This right here is A half diminished. Okay, relevant to point out because that shape is exactly what we did at the beginning of the tune. 
This is E half diminished with the four as the melody, that's why I play this shape. Well, this is A half diminished with the four as the melody, that's why I play this shape. So again, a language. Okay. I think I got a across a few of the main points that I wanted to make, especially just those shapes existing in certain places um, and how I, I hope if you want to work on this style in a jazz context that you can look forward to uh, figuring out a few of those and starting to work with them for yourself. Let's hear the whole arrangement up to that point just so I can demonstrate it now that we talked through all that. <laughs> haven't downloaded it yet, get my solo guitar arrangement pack with the link in the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. This full arrangement, this chord melody version of Stella by Starlight is in there with tabs and notation and showing the chord changes, and there are other arrangements in that pack as well. I just demonstrated it through up to the part that we had talked about in this video. If you want to hear the whole thing, what I recommend watching next is my video about the technical execution of that piece. I do demonstrate the entire thing in the other video. I'll put a link to that video on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube, or you can get to it with the link in the description as well. I post a new lesson video every week. I hope to see you in the next one. Next week, we're getting away from this chord melody arranging series, and we're going to do something totally new, totally different. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.